So, tell Zoe and me, who is that guy over there? Oh, that's Craig's new druid friend talking to Dan. His name is... Peter Smith. I think. You mean you're not a reformed druid? I am a reformed druid, yes, but that doesn't mean I'm a member of the RDNA. Nor am I a member of the new RDNA. Nor am I in the RDG. There are a whole lot of us who've either quietly fallen out of organized branches of reformed druidry, or never bought into them. We're perhaps the largest contingent in the reform, but we don't have an identity yet. Thus I'm simply a reformed druid. What does that mean? Peter, with all the reform's diversity there are only a few rock bottom things that tie together all reformed druids. That would be the two basic tenets. Right. Everything else was added later. The Founders added liturgy and the other trappings so they could pretend to be an organized religion as part of a protest. They thought it would be just a mischievous memory by the next year. But the creation captured the Creator, and it endured. The original ultra simple premise and possibility was forgotten. It changed a lot after it left Carlton College. Sure, everything grows. But does it grow more wise, more fun, or just more complicated? Ever since our beginning, it's been a constant battle to prune back the thicket they planted and fight down dogmatic tendencies. And all those plans of energetic folks to take the reform to the next logical step. But, you see this dynamic in many religions. I've heard Druid priests spend much of their time fighting their own egos. Well, we've sure got plenty of big egos here. Not just the priests, they're just the easiest to spot. Anyway, that's a big part of why I'm not a member of the RDNA. No doubt, Andrea told you about less is more. Well, it's really my mantra too. As Norman Nelson, one of our founders, said, get outside, look around you, there is something bigger than us, and we call it the Earth Mother. That's the kind of instruction I want, not Craig's endless Celtic studies. So, you don't like the Celtic style? Celtic, Slavic, Buddhist, Christian, the flavor doesn't matter to me, it's the tone and required complexity. It may surprise you, but three or four of my great-grandparents are Irish or Scottish, maybe more so than Mr. Super Celt. But I don't see the need for adding more Celtic aspects, interesting as they are. Our Grove's refreshing diversity keeps me here, that and getting to go outside with my friends, and talk stuff that other folks either don't care about, or are afraid to explore. And it's fun. But are you still a member of one of the orders? I'm not taking orders, damn it. Give me good natured chaos any day. There, there, Andrea. I understand. Well, this certainly isn't going to be easy. But Annika's lucky to have one parent on her side already. Mine were a united brick wall against me for the first four years. I'm worried about how she is going to approach her friends on this. She might want to take her time, but it's her choice. No one needs to know her orientation, and it's not likely she's going to find a partner or a newfound contingent of support. Considering how ostracized she already is at school. But, if she's moving soon, why not come out now? Gauge the reaction before she leaves for a new venue. It's an opportunity. She certainly wants to tell the whole world. Sure, it isn't easy to keep her true self bottled up. And she should be able to bloom in the ideal world, 
but there's an element of strategy here. Is the hellhole of high school the best time to challenge other people's perceptions and prejudice? Or wait for a friendlier, more mature audience, like college? The danger is that you might keep putting off a hard choice until your best years are behind you. Don't know. The greatest challenge to young folk in these situations, whether coming out gay or pagan, is that they have trouble seeing beyond immediate hard times. Yes, when we are 14, we think about a week or two in advance. At 21, maybe a year or two in advance, and so on. True, it's harder for them to foresee how things might sour, or pick up someday. It's said that wise King Solomon greeted calmly all good and bad news, saying, and this too will change. I'm starting to sound like an adult, aren't I? You can fake it as well as the rest of us. That's good advice. Actually, everyone has some type of association or affiliation that brings them into a minority category of some sort. Like race, religion, orientation, etc. The question is whether you allow it to marginalize yourself, or empower you. Strangely, I found that so many people see gender orientation as a choice, and religion as an inherited, perhaps even genetic, determination. When in fact, it's the opposite. Few identities receive a stronger social backlash than the most sensitive and personal ones, the very ones that no one else should intrude upon. Hard to figure out people sometimes. I suppose some wish the world was simpler and consistent, and try to force it to be so. True. Now, just in case you haven't heard it yet, you know of course, that this isn't your fault. It's nobody's fault, it just happened. It could even be a glorious thing. They say that in the nature versus nurture debate, parents only definitely control the religion, politics and food preferences of their kids. No, I'm not going to play their whole hierarchy. That is not hierarchy. Paradoxicals end game. I have agreed with the basic tenets, they are clear and useful. I've partaken of the waters of life, a nice symbol of a group communion. But I will not accept the ordination to the first order. Call it a quiet protest. Sarah mentioned the various orders and offices that had different responsibilities. Aren't you interested in helping out? I don't need any titles, orders or fancy duties. Anybody can and should pitch in somehow. All of those goals could be met without such formalization, in my opinion. I'm just going to be Dan, simple Dan. I participate, I show them where the firewood is, I share thoughts, I learn and I enjoy being a simple reformed druid, and that's sufficient. And actually, that's wonderful. Well, I still think a little framework helps to clarify everyone's roles. Sorry, I think it's just jumping onto a slippery slope. If it really works for you, then go with it, but don't say I didn't warn you. I understand what you're saying. Tell me, Dan, how do you practice druidism? What's not druidry? It's a state of mind and type of lifestyle. It's not just sitting in a building or forest for one hour a week. I plant trees. I clear a brush, I know places to sit outside and examine what is inside me. I have soil under my fingernails, I feel the pulse of the passing seasons, I anticipate when the birds migrate, when the acorns are going to drop. You cannot get that even from a whole shelf of books. This is my druidism. Isn't it grand? That sounds a bit new agey. <laughs> we're all a bit shy to admit we're tree huggers, 
sounds goofy. Sure, nature is beautiful at times, and the cycles of life are a powerful message, but trust me, these trees and critters out here are not best friends at a tea party. They are fighting for dominance, killing and choking each other out. Nature is truly red in tooth and claw. Well, sure I realize that. Yes, but what folks don't realize how precarious mankind's hold on life was before the advent of supermarkets. Nature wasn't some pretty lapdog pet. She was a respected adversary and sometimes a partner. Knowledge of her ways and timing meant the difference between life and death to people. That practicality to society is missing in modern druidism. What else is our purpose? Egads. I'm starting to sound like Craig on his soapbox now, aren't I? Now, Annika is smart, and she has no doubt been reading voraciously on the internet about all things gay. That's fine, but it doesn't mean she has been choosing the most accurate or helpful information. If you'd like, I could talk to her. I'd appreciate that, she knows you already well. Alright, I'll speak to her in private. Inevitably, she's going to use social media to test her new persona, but she'd better do so in a non-traceable way. Nowadays, news can spread faster and farther than the town grapevine ever did. I hope she can distinguish between being cautious and ashamed. Oh no, I won't let her be ashamed. The only thing shameful is someone hating my lovely little Annika for something that just doesn't concern them. Regardless, one sleep, and there are immediate consequences. Of course, it isn't the end of the world, more like the beginning of one, but it is usually better to do so on your own terms. A great website for getting an insight of being a gay adult is the It Gets Better Project. I like it. People post there about how they went through the process of coming out, and what their situation is like now, and the good and bad points along the way. Pagans also could learn a thing or two from that website about coming out of the broom closet. I'll also give you a handful of other good sites to get started with, such as PFLAG, and such. I will do whatever I can to help her. We'll find our way through this confusion together. Wow, Andrea, would you adopt me? Be careful what you wish for, it is no bed of roses in our house either. You know being Hindu. Gay and a newcomer are three strikes in rural Upper Michigan. Was it as difficult for you? Well, I came out pagan and lesbian at age 16 in deep Texas. It was like I came down from the moon, so to speak. Nobody could handle it back then, and few probably can now. I didn't care what anyone thought, and they didn't much care about me either. Nearly ran away from home. I'm sure your parents will eventually realize the amazing person you are. I remember just four years ago when you used to dress wildly, kind of like how Kiki does now. Thanks. People change. I'm learning to compromise with society's facade of normalcy. I'm trying at least to look respectable now. And I'm going to be a businesswoman soon, you know. Rebirth and self-realization is a cyclical thing. Perhaps that's easier for pagans to acknowledge? I wish you all the good fortune that I can. I'm grateful you're hung around here long enough to be here for a transference of the Archdruid Sea. Do whatever it will be. I think it is a good symbol of continuity, after all the rough years we've had. Well, I've invested a lot of myself in this grove, so I'm happy to stick around a few more weeks. I want to make sure it all goes smoothly, no hiccups. I hope we never see the return of some loony like Alan again. Sarah is still recovering from that you know. She might be recovering faster than you think. 
Evil deeds like his reverberate so damn far, even now. That Alan was such a swarmy, egotistical bastard. Good riddance. Anyway, I'll get your list and get to work tonight. Enishan? Ishan is tomorrow. Annika is today. One crisis at a time. <laughs>